Welcome to the Carl Sterling Podcast, delivering conversations with experts and excellence in education. Action. All right. First of all, welcome to the Carl Sterling Podcast. I decided that's the officially the name of my podcast because I've had a few names for it and it always changes, but I'm not going to change my name. So now it's the Carl Sterling Podcast. I have uh, one of my best friends in the whole world here is Laura is watching. Kathy, good to see you, Ted. Good to see you. And um, for those who are watching on Facebook, if it's actually streaming to Facebook, which I'm still not sure, I appreciate you joining us. We appreciate you joining us. So my guest and I have been communicating for a few years. I've known about her through uh, some friends of mine for a few years. And um, finally, we meet. <laughs> and we're going to get to talk about some work that she's doing, has been doing. And as, as one, of, one of the things I love about you, Anne, is you're constantly evolving, which that's my world, too, because... If we don't keep evolving, then we stop evolving, and that's never as good, right? So I want to introduce my special guest, Ann Heiser. Thank you very much for being with me. Thank you for having me, Carl. And so, hello, everyone. It's nice good to meet you here in California. <laughs> yeah, so you're out in sunny California. Uh, Not so sunny. Can... Yeah. Where are you out there? Where, where are you? In Oceanside. Is that near L.A.? It's a little north of San Diego, so it's kind of close to LA, but about an hour, 20 minutes when if I'm driving. Okay. All right. I've probably been yeah. through there, but I don't remember. Um, so I wanted to have you come on and talk with us because you're doing things that you know, I don't know anyone else in our circle of people, circles that over, seem to overlap who are doing anything like you're doing. And, um, you know, I could do a formal introduction and go on and on and on, but you're doing some really cool things. I would rather have you talk about what you do and tell us what you're up to right now that, that is, uh, well, I have to mention the Leverage program, okay, that you've been doing work with people with Parkinson's for years. You're a movement specialist. You're so many things. It, it's hard to put you into a category because you feel... Okay. You have so much knowledge. Tell us, what are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? So my brand, um, that kind of all these things made them, they evolved into their by themselves, right? I just saw them like coming to life and I grabbed them. And in my 30, what, five years as a certified ACE instructor, group at fitness, and going to all these conventions, I've seen all this geniosity oh i just made up a new word i love all right. that all this geniosity around me and i have been you know embracing all the pieces that i think are incredible and by the way on my youtube channel i have these people stacy lee kraus sue oh, hitman yeah. carrie lee carrie jean in eakins um david wick in and all his geniosity in every way whatsoever i mean if you just take something as crazy as a mudra called the corpus do you see how easily that goes into my hand oh, wow. but my clients you see we've we've been taught to do this this one that's one nice we've been taught to do the curly fist i just went down a rabbit hole but see this kind of thing this is something that allows your fascia to do something i don't know what i have to admit but it absolutely adds balance, strength, power. It actually helps me at the dentist when I'm nervous. It's like an anxiety. It's like a, almost like a, one of those weighted blankets or a thunder shirt. Yeah, sure. Okay. And there's many, many ways. But that's just one quick rabbit hole I went down. But if you talk about, you know, the melt method, for instance, Sue Hitzman's way of rehydrating re, uh, the fascia. But all of these things have to be done. <laughs> you can't just take a pull and they're there. You, they have, they need to be practiced. But my main, like when they say, what would you stand on the mountaintop and tell the world if you had a, a voice like that? Mm -hmm. And what I want to tell people is that your fascia 
your connective tissue, what I call the Spider-Man suit, okay, yep. has this intelligence. It totally has its own brain, if you will, that remembers every single movement you have ever done, ever, in your life, time from the time you were born. Yeah. That's why on my website, you'll see, moving since 1961. <laughs> hey, you know, we're almost exactly the same age. I'll be 61 <laughs> on June 5th. Yeah. Okay. So you're a little older because I'll be 61 on April 30. Oh, mind you, I'm not older than you. Wait, that's we're, Yeah, we're almost the same. So <clears throat> I, I'd like to interject for one moment because okay. um, I want to make sure people who are watching understand a really uh, a level 101, what is fascia? Basically, is the ectoskeleton of muscle. So, for example, it help it it causes muscle to keep its form. If we didn't have fascia, the muscle would go. <laughs> Muscles are dumb. They're stupid. They don't they don't know anything. Fascia is not dumb, and I, I will have to tell you this. And um, I was always taught that muscles don't have memory, and brain has memory to help us move our muscles. Um, and I believed that for the longest time until I realized, and I look at the work of you know Schleip, um, Tom Myers. You Sue Hitzman. and Sue, I just interviewed in fact, I've interviewed all of them except for Schleip. I've got to get him on here. But, but when you look at their research, I mean, I appreciate you uh, bringing to the forefront the fact that there is memory in muscle in this one area called fascia, which is the outer layer. And just one step further, okay, if you were to take uh, a cadaver, which they have these dissection labs, I've never been to one, and you dissect. If you uh, pull off the fascia from like like the calf off the leg, right? So when you're taking off this sticky web of ectoskeleton, it doesn't stop at the end of the calf. It keeps going up into the upper leg above the knee. And there are these fascial lines. Okay. And I'm only saying this because I want to make sure people realize that fascia is special. And without it, we'd be just little piles of, we'd be like a blob on the ground. <laughs> You know, more importantly, and this is what I found out since I started doing those arm balancing, right? It's It's got, <laughs> it has a, te a multidimensional tensile strength. And this is kind of what we're talking about, right? Yeah. And I do these exercises with the hands because guess what? When you look at people who are aging, their hands kind of like start to, you know, not be alive anymore. So yeah, we do a lot of stretching. And I mean, one of the, the best exercises, if you just stretch your fingers as wide as you possibly yeah. can, it literally hurts in between. That's a great stretch, right? Stretching your fingers. What I love to do the is... extensors here. Yeah, the extensors. The extensors you feel it yeah. right through your wrist, see? Mm -hmm. And everything. And, and, you know, so, okay. So that's hands and feet. You know, I talk about hands and feet being the future of fitness. And so does David Wick. And he is onto some absolutely incredible things right mm -hmm. and if you've seen those pulses that he uses now for instance my client with parkinson's bird yes he, that's a great video by the way yeah Go yeah ahead. thank you he i mean that video doesn't even touch the tip of the iceberg to what he's really capable of you know he has this whole little choreographed routine that we do with a little grapevine side tap step forward walk back and he can do this, right? Off the, mm. He can totally got it packed. But what are the differences is we use different songs. Now, getting on to that, if you go to my video with Carrie, Jean Eakins, yeah. you will see that her latest research, and she's got 30 studies out of Germany uh, University that she goes and, and works with with her Drums Alive program and working with movement to music, right? That is the most the best thing you can do for your body and brain is work, move to music, right? And, and, and dancing counts. Okay, dancing counts. Yes. And the most important thing that we want to understand is that even if you have never danced for 50 years and now you're 80 years old, but before that you danced a lot, every single step of that dancing counts now. It mm -hmm. counts. Because my philosophy and the methods that I use grounded cross-training the nooks and crannies or the lever age method all use a connection to your muscle memory filing cabinet. 
I love it. Okay, so in order to be able to understand that I'm not, I'm not asking you to do something you've never done before. Maybe you haven't done it for, for 50 years, but you did it. It's in there somewhere. You just need to connect it. Go to the filing cabinet in your mind. Right. Pull out the file. Check it. Look, open like CSI. I always pull out my... Um, hmm. Ah, okay. there you go. Go look, examine, really and truly look. If you have to literally go and physically pull out your medals from when you won them and elementary exactly. school do that yeah yeah really you feel the feels that's what it's all about and then you connect and your body goes oh yeah i know that and you can have a whole different you move better instantly is what you do it's kind of like an app, <laughs> <laughs> it's an app. i love it i love it you plug it you into know, your so existing hardware i want to go back and i want to say first of all i was thinking um opposite of what you were in a way, when you were doing this, I was thinking of, oh, we fire up our extensors because, you know, for I, so many people, especially with neurological or movement disorders, their hands start to go like that. Okay. Yes. So there's a difference Without between them, this mm -hmm. and actually stretching this side without doing anything on the back side. Yeah. And this, you can still stretch this side, like you're saying, you're going to get through here and all through these selectors, mm -hmm. and you're firing up the extensors. And I just wanted to clarify that because what you said and I said were, were opposite because I was in a different planet for a moment, and you were right, and I was just left. <laughs> okay, so well, just welcome, to, Laura. To good to see you, Laura. We have two Lauras here. Oh, we have three Lauras here. Oh, hello. Is everybody Laura Goodwin? Good to see you. It's been a long time. Whoa. Hi, everyone. But also feet, right? Feet are so important, right? So oh, grounding, yeah. standing on the ground, which you could never do in your weather. And I can hardly do it in mine because 60 degrees for me is kind of Minus chilly. 14 here today. Thank you very much. No way. No code but therapy at that point. There it. are, see, if you separate your toes, right? I'm sorry to have to show you, but like this is how I believe the width of people toes should be right so now my feet are really really wide i've never ever used pointy high heel shoes i'm like i'm totally nothing good for you <laughs> but that is something and you know those little things they put in people's feet when you go for a mani pedi mm -hmm. that's where you can start just put one of those things and sit with them in your feet so that you can start yeah. to spread your toes out because that is uh, why do you think they they are designed like that not so that they can be squished into a thing that doesn't look Anything or, like or what they call a foot coffin. <laughs> right. Yeah, little boxes. I Even don't know who put, who said that word, but I used to teach for Dr. Emily Splickle. So I learned oh, I love Emily, she's my hero. Oh, she's and, and actually, I would be, uh, I'm not, not here to promote myself, but I'm actually excited. The first live workshop in two years, uh, or two and a half years, will be March 26, 27, 2022, at the Noboso headquarters in Chandler near Phoenix at Emily's place. Really? We just booked it two days ago. So uh, well, the thing is, is uh, when I taught for her, it was so interesting. And I'll never forget, I want to just piggyback on this, is she had me substitute teach for her over at Parkour Generations, uh, Dan Edwards' place in London. This is going back like six years, seven years ago. And when I went there, the lady who spoke before me, whose name escapes me at the moment, actually did a demonstration on parkour equipment talking about exactly what you're talking about using her she actually they didn't look weird or anything she just could move her toes more independently than most of us can that's stacy she, lee kraus no it's not stacy i know no. stacy um, i've interviewed her okay. and met her a few times it's somebody else i can find the name and post it but um but she was able to grip differently around the bars and the objects and should have seen this lady move and i've always subscribed uh yes by the way laura uh, whoever just sent that yes this will be recorded and i'll email it to people afterwards and then post it too it'll be on youtube and everything so it's really cool i love what you're saying um it wasn't that long ago i started doing that to my toes too because i felt like even though i don't wear heels and i do barefoot a lot mm -hmm. It's not enough. Well, again, two yeah. Hitzman's melt method foot and hand treatment. Yes. Five minutes max. 
Yeah. And it literally affects your entire neck and hips if you do it. It does. Because it's a hydration method of hydrating. But again, remember, you've got to have to drink the water. Yeah, absolutely. Without the water, it's, it's not like a snag, right? It's like, oh, you can't tell me I'm going to have to drink a bunch of water now as well <laughs> and do the milk method. Boy, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, that's the game changer there, too. And I, I could go down rabbit holes, too. And all I'll say to that is I have a device I use, body composition analysis type device that measures all these cool things. And it, we've tested it against some things. Very accurate. But hydration is a problem for a lot of people. I know. They're under hydrated. the aging because yeah. oh. guess what? They got to get up and walk to the bathroom every time they need to be when they be hydrating properly. Exactly. And they don't, don't want to get up. And by the way, that's another reason why – um, that's another reason why the seated method called grounded cross training the nooks and crannies is for people who are chair bound or they spend a lot of time in the chair. So if you'd like that little demo at any point, let me know. I would love it. Anybody Actually, sitting in a chair. If we, you know what? Um, we have some movement professionals that are going to watch and are watching. We All you need is a chair that has no wheels and no arms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would love to see that because so many of us work with a population that either doesn't walk or doesn't walk well. And we need the most we can get to do in their chair because they're so, you know, they're not going to get up and do it and walk because they either can't or it's a safety hazard. So just in a nutshell, the method, the methods that I, you know, have created what, 30 years ago or so, that have just been really developing and developing. And by the way, every single body that gets in front of me, because you know how the guy says, I see dead people, I see stick people, I see stick people. So lever- leverage is what I see and perpendicularity matters, right? Especially if you're going sideways on your, on your elbow joint, right? Like I do. And by the way, when you like that, every single pad is like doing minute you know, <laughs> things. And when you've got your entire body weight on your elbow joint, right, sideways, you're building, my bones in my fingers are so big, I can't fit a ring on anymore. I cannot fit any of my rings on because my bones have thickened because guess what? I'm putting weight on them every single time I go sideways, on, which is twice a day each side because I do it at the park for as long as I can. So 30 seconds is as long as I can stay sideways and breathe and hold it and hold it and if anybody wants to know i will demonstrate quickly please don't do this let's at home. do it yeah yeah this is what do. it is okay so this is way way don't do this at home but it's just an example of how the leverage works okay so what i'm okay, doing <laughs> and what i'm doing is yeah this is actually easier with one hand on top but i'm going to put my hip on top of my elbow and it's got to be on top. And then I can then leverage. You don't have to worry yeah. about me doing it because I can't yet. Yeah, but see, like, it's just a matter of dropping into the um, the gravity. So you feel the drop, right? Mm-hmm. And then you're just squeezing your butt cheeks as hard as you can. Okay. Laura, and almost, you and I are going to try this when we teach them together. Like, like looking for the stillness, right? Short lever. So you're squeezing your butt cheeks together like there's a hundred dollar bill between Well, them, no, right? you're actually just lifting. So the other side for me is different, right? Mm-hmm. Other side, <laughs> I can get those feet completely together for some oh, reason. Amazing. Amazing. Your puppy's hiding now. Is he afraid you're gonna hurt yourself? No, this is his, his Jedi wrapping himself. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me what's happening there. What? What? I mean, you got right. all kinds so, of fascial so it, firing. First of all, all kinds. Yeah. Of force so you've got the entire back body. It's a it's a it's a back extension. I always tell people you've got to lift both sets of cheeks, right? So these and those, yeah. you've got to <laughs> squeeze them as hard as you can. So it's all. <laughs> Extenses back body, and they got so Bert. Okay, so that video doesn't show anything but what Bert can do. 
He's very flexible now because he's been doing a lot Bert of stretching. Bert lives with Parkinson's for those yeah. who may not know. Okay. All right. Bert can put his knee as effectively enough on his elbow to feel that it's on there. Because you're making shelves all the time. If you've got a shelf, then you can use it. It's like a shelf, any shelf. Okay. So, for instance, uh, this is what I teach in my life. We want to have bendy toes. <laughs> we want to have bendy toes so that you can use them because a lot of people, and this is my Heiser maneuver, right? How to get down on the floor and up again. I just completely got off the chair. Hold on, I'm getting back now soon, okay? <laughs> but the Heiser maneuver is something when people get down on the floor and up again and they do it easily and they drill that, whenever they land up on the floor, if they do, it's no big surprise and they know how to get back up. Yeah, the point yeah. is, <laughs> right, this is what you see. This is what I saw, okay? Tell me, everybody, this is what you do. Tell me if you do this. See that back foot? See that back foot? Yeah. Okay. So it's because you want to curl the foot so that your toes are ready. Mm -hmm. And then you get out of your way, put your foot down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to pick it up and put it there. as close as possible mm -hmm. to the other knee. Then you yep. come back. Now, I'm going to push this like this. I'm going to push away. And at the same time, I'm going to moon. And I'm going to stand up. Oh, man. I like that. Right? I love that. I'm going to stand up like that. Right? And then when I come down, I'm, I'm like, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I do this, you see I'm already lower. Right. I'm closer to the ground already. Now, if I do this, here's your first lever, right? Mm -hmm. How about now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got a shelf. See, I can push down and up on it. So, it's, so this is the tensile integrity, tensile strength of your fashion. Right, right. And then look here. It's right here. It's right there. <laughs> How about this side? It's right there. Look, the floor's close now. Now, it's not rocket science. It's here. Boom. If you've got sore knees and you can't put them down, then just bypass and send you back on the floor. I love that. Because, you know, one of the things we teach in our workshop education system is is getting up, getting down. Um, not like you just did. So um, I'm going to have to ask you if I can borrow that and give you credit. There's, a, there's Be actually a PDF on my website called Under the Heiser Maneuver, and you can download it for free mm -hmm. with it. Oh my gosh! I, I would want to, yeah. Laura almost is with us and watching. Um, she has a couple questions. I'll ask you in a minute, but sure. Laura, so I'll just quickly get on my back. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Laura lives so, with Parkinson's, and you know what we teach, Laura. I mean, getting up and down. Um, we, we need to practice what Anne just showed us. Yeah, but see, it's be better think about the principles of leverage, leverage. Yeah. See, this is long lever. Now I'm going to go short lever. Look, I need this hand to support me so that I can. Boom. Now you're going short. Yep. Now I'm going to even go shorter. And I'm going to use this hand to tuck and roll. Now I'm on my back, right? I'm on my back. Yeah. Okay. So lots of people don't realize that when you try to do this, you can't turn. This is a break. So what you're going to do is stretch that leg mm -hmm. and this arm. Yeah, exactly. And then you push with this foot. Push. Push and reach. There you are. Yep. Okay. Now, if people don't have the body strength to do that, mm -hmm. right? Because that's a pretty powerful move if you do that. Then what we do is this. Snuggle. Yes, them. exactly. Yeah. Right? Then you push and you bring one knee forward. Yep. Other one there. Now, mm -hmm. yes, perfect leverage. See this? Mm -hmm. Hands down. Boom. Yeah. That, I love that. I love that. Yep. Boom. Okay. Then, guess what? You wake up your toes. Mm-hmm. Maybe like the kitty. 
Now do a little bit of a kneading. This is a great exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting warmer, obviously. But see, you want to get all those toes down and you want to actually feel and pushing, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is advanced. If you're going to stand up from this, he has a breadcrumb. You want to see your wrist touch your knee. Now, if all I do is push the floor away, look what's going to happen. Yeah. I'm only pushing the floor away. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come back. And what I'm doing is I'm tracking my knees on my rails. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. See, I love back. your cue. I love your cues, your verbal and your visual, yeah. because that's knees something I that. admit that I'm not that good at. And I try and I try. <laughs> that's and then you can word. go inside and outside. But see, my feet are doing everything. Guess what I'm doing? Abdominals. Abdominals. Like you can't believe, right? Wow. But now, guess what? If I push hard I and mean. I push back, me. Wow. And then I, I love that, Anne. I absolutely love it. And if you suck, here's your drill. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's many ways, but you can, this is like your basic way where you get out of your way, bring your leg, boom. Yep. Now push back, whoop. As yeah, a back, exactly. to moon up. All leverage. Back, back in the chair. <laughs> and yes, the exercise, everyone. So if you are in a chair, what you want to do is get your butt all the way back. As much of your yeah. back mm -hmm. of your thigh on the chair as you can get. Okay? So, all the way back. And then, more importantly, guys, the floor is chocolate. The floor is three inches of melted chocolate. Or whatever. If you don't like chocolate, make it something else. But what you're going to feel... Jalapenos. <laughs> what you're going to feel is your toes going through the chocolate. Like, you know, when you're standing on the ocean, like by the ocean, and the wave comes in and your feet just sink into the sand like that. That. You're going to feel that. And you're going to have your heel directly underneath your knee. Okay, so perpendicularity on the shin. And listen, I'm oozing out the back of my chair. Yeah, this is what you want to feel. The whole back rest. Perpendicular. Mm -hmm. Hip width. Okay, so we're going to check from the bottom chocolate. And then you're going to sit hard in your chair. I like, feel like you want to ah, squish the chair. Right? Okay. Guess yep. what that is? That is bearing down. And you know what that's good for? The vagus nerve. Really? Yes. I know. So what, what will it do for the vagus nerve? Tone it. All vagus nerve toning. Inversion. Laughter. Singing. Uh, bearing down. Meditation, obviously. Pet, petting a pet. All those so things. Will all it the have any life. effect? Will it have any benefits, let's say, for vagus uh, uh, so gut brain connection like as far as Listen, this is this is why i got so mad when i learned about it for the first time when i was writing my little ebook because nobody taught us at school about yeah. this amazing brain stem that connects your brain and your gut and that nobody taught us how easy and free it is to tone it when i see so many young people with this colitis yeah yeah and they what is it it's gonna result in anxiety and depression and we we're already like that anyway back on track <laughs> this is so all great down. now what i want you to feel can you see if i drew a stick man mm -hmm. of myself right now i would be right angles yes and there's only one actually there's one two three four levers okay now, I want you to feel your shoulders on the back wrist and kind of give it a little rub so you feel my shoulder blades on this chair kind of really dig in and now feel them. And the back of my pelvis, I can feel on the top here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Me too. Now, Me too. you want to zip up a zip from your pubic bone to the end of your chin and make it flat. Now, this is how the zip looks. 
or when it's flat, you're there. Okay. Now take just you, your hands are just resting in your lap. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna take your elbow towards your hip. Okay. Did you feel your abs quickly now, right there? Yeah. Relax that and lift your shoulders like you do when you're a little stressed out or anxious and feel no abs. Mm -hmm. Pull the elbows back down again. There they are. There they aren't. There they are. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I also, if you add a little squeeze, like newspaper on your arm, with that, you're going to really feel that corset, right? A corset that goes all the way around. And then you just you just tie the bows or you hook all the hooks, right? Mm -hmm. So you have now not only pulled up a zip, but you now have put on a corset because you can feel that yeah. that makes a difference, oh, right? Yeah, I feel I feel a difference. All right. So now the last thing you're gonna do is put a big crown on your head, a big heavy one. Okay? King Carl. <laughs> King Carl, now you've got this crown on your head and you have checked all the boxes. Listen, this is the assumed position. Can you see? You've got, to, you've got to go from bottom of your feet to your crown of your head. Check, 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 check. Okay, here I am. I'm in the assumed position. I'm a rock. Take the biggest breath you can possibly take and then hold it for one second. Take a little tiny sip more. And then as slow as you can, blow it out of your head like a volcano. Shh. So you empty. And then you suck it back in your head. And blow it out your feet. Shh. So you empty. Above and below, breaths, Taurus. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And now we've got it. Okay. All right. Here's your first exercise, people. Ready? I love it. Okay. So just in that assumed position. Check, 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 check. Elbows down, relaxed. All we're going to do is push through the bottom of the sole of your foot. That's it. Okay. Do you see, people? You're leaning back. You just think, can you see that? You're not trying to squeeze your butt right now. You're pushing through the bottom of your feet, but what's happening as a result is your butt squeezing. Yeah. See that? Okay. You want to make sure that once you've put your feet in the chocolate, no part of it moves anymore. You're stuck in a block. It's like cement. It's like super glue. Every, tip, every part of the bottom of your foot, right? So can you see if you keep squeezing, your butt, and you maybe have a song that's playing slowly or maybe quickly. We add a little bit of, but don't don't come off the backrest yet, and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Does anybody feel the burn yet? And did we do anything? I do. My uh, my my feet are stuck in Carolina Reaper peppers. Good. So did you feel your butt cheeks, your thighs, by doing a few of those? I feel it all. I feel a core. Abs, quads. Good. I've got what? two more in the basic three to show you. Now, feel back rest a lot. Mm -hmm. Make sure no part of your... Make sure no part of your... Um, geez, I should not want black. Your feet move. And you're going to put your hands on your knees so that you can see what happens when... Remember? You push one knee forward and you pull the other one back. But you're sliding on the back of your legs. It's called the slide. Mm -hmm. And they're going parallel to each other, right? Mm -hmm. So one's coming forward and the other one's going back. And your crown is still on. And you're just pushing. And the feet do not slide. Okay? Yeah. All right. So now... <laughs> Just going to go inside for a moment and feel that. It feels like somebody's just like oiled your hips with a little oil can, like one of those little gnomes. The nooks and crannies, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's your last one. 
So this time we're going to come away from the back rest. And the way we do that is use the belly button and a breath. And it's kind of like one of those, one of those things that they use with the elastic like that. With the yeah. catapult, catapult. Okay, so here it is. Feel that? So yeah. now you're not on the back rest. Right. Okay. But you could take a breath and then peel yourself back on. All right, so you're so, inhaling. Uh, at what point do we in inhale? I'm just going to move my arms out the way, right? Okay. I dream of genie. Yeah, but don't leave those arms up because it's going to start doing this. You just want to let them relax and feel as though you're peeling your back. All right, so we're going to stay up. And notice now somebody's taking your back rest away. You know, like those classes where they take your saddle away? Yeah. <sighs> All right. So, but now they're taking your back rest away and you're just sitting on your butt. Notice that you want to still keep a straight zip. See that? Keep a straight zip. Okay. And this time, you, this is the test. This is where that you know you've, you've put your feet on the ground and kept them there or not. Okay. Because what you want to really do is... But you have to see my feet. Okay. What you want to do is make sure that your feet stay and you can push them down with your hands. Okay. But what you want to do is lift a cheek. Lift a cheek without lifting that foot. You can roll to the side a little bit. And then lift the other cheek, but don't lift the heel. Lift wow. the cheek. Roll from side to side, but do not lift your heel off the ground. Okay. No part of your foot comes off, right? Okay. <laughs> that is the test. And let me tell you, it takes a little while to connect the body and the brain, right? But look yeah. what naturally is happening here. Can you see what naturally is happening? If I slow it down, my elbow, as I lift, is coming right to my hip because it's there already. See the lever? It's right in there. I can actually feel a bone with the bone if i want I to it. and do you yeah. feel your abs going on oh yeah okay thank you and then just feel that other side <sighs> that bone in there it's like when we're using the real leverage it's like you don't have this part this is not existent you just got this yeah, little right. elbow stuff that right. you're reaching with right <laughs> yes yeah okay you know i just have to interject for a second because this is um, this is new to me, and yeah, at the same time, it, it, the exercises are new. The concept, I totally understand because of how I approach other things. But I'm going to thank you right now because I work with uh, about two thirds of the people we work with here. My two therapists and myself have some type of movement disorder and probably two thirds of those are Parkinson's, but there's other things too. But no matter what though, um, we have a, a, a small percentage who cannot get out of a chair or if they do, they need a lot of assistance. And so yeah, what's sure. beautiful about it is that we can do these things. Maybe this will help them to get up out of a chair at some Absolutely. point. You know, Absolutely. because I always tell people you can't, move well without adequate strength you can't have adequate balance without enough strength to support it but what is strength it's not just go and pump iron it's what you do every day it's what you do every day it's what you do every day standing sitting is the biggest way of it's the biggest thing so let me great. just tell you that um part of the next really the next thing would be a seated push-up right so what I would do is I would pull and this lever, this whole lever is going to fall forward until I feel my weight on my, on my hands like this without my shoulders doing anything. And then I'm just going to push back and then I'm going to pull. Oh. So lead with your, your super cold Geniosity. 
So there, yep, there, and pull. And if you actually pull and push, you're working your fingers, you're working your heel of your hand, and you're going oh, all wow. the way to the back rest every time. So you're fully extending that arm. Now, check this out, Carl. If we're going to stand up, guess what we've done? We've already gone like this, right? Mm -hmm. We've done this. Okay. Now, we're going to scoot two steps forward. One, two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, slow motion, pull, okay, so slow motion, pull, push, stand. Okay, now, you haven't gone anywhere because you're still in the chocolate. So imagine if you stand up and you're so surprised, and I've seen this many times, the face, like, oh my God, I just stood up, okay? <laughs> so you stand up, but because you're still where you were, and you go, ooh, you can sit right back down because nobody moved your chair <laughs> yes i love so that you're here. <coughs> you're oh, there man. look i'm catching now i'm going to sit again yeah okay. lower lower moon 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 and sit and pull and push and sit and pull, and pull. You know, i have a person i'm going to be with in 40 minutes who's like 10 minutes away from me we're doing this stuff from what I what I remember from what today we're doing it because he is, he can get up, but it's not easy. So we're gonna start baseline right here today with this stuff with him. I can't wait. And you know I hate to say it, but and let me just I share what... who's, sometimes I kind of get anxious about seeing them because I'm like, what am I gonna do that's new that's gonna help them? Because I'm always looking for new things. This is going to help. Listen, my problem is I've got so much content that it's like driving me crazy and i need to have my head lanced <laughs> well let's lance it and connect it with mine because i need info <laughs> no seriously everybody every single body stick person that gets in front of me i get more because i'm looking at there you see the the beauty about this program too is the fact that you only know your unique muscle memory bank Mm -hmm. And here's an example. I'll tell my, my seniors, right? The, the people who are 80 and 90 who did never would had iron pumping gyms and aerobics in their day, right? So I tell them, what have you got in your muscle memory bank? And they go, well, nothing. Oh, are you sure? Did you rake leaves? Did you, did you shovel snow? Did you climb trees? They go, no, 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 but I rode a horse. I'm like, Pfft. there you go. Kidding me. So they go, and then you see their face and they go, oh, really? That's great. Then they start getting excited about the fact that they do have one. And then when you see them go into that thought process of what else could be in there, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, your, yeah. You, it's only you. You have that. You know what's in there and you can plug into it and move better instantly when you apply these leverage and grounded principles and visualizations because it's all there. Well, I have a question for you. Okay, so in my first book, well, actually, the, the second one, I like the neuroplasticity chapter much better than the first one. Two reasons. It's just way better content, very succinct, and a lot shorter. But in the first book, I write about the, uh, uh, the example of riding a bicycle. And I talk about my kids. And when I started to let go, and they didn't know I let go, but they were riding on their own. So if you look at the science and all this kind of stuff, well, all the research, it, well, a lot of research is going to tell you that there are neural pathways that were created and developed that because you did it, you practice, practice, these neurons fire together, wire together. Now you have that in your, you have your neural bicycle riding neural pathway. Okay. But it sounds to me like I'm just thinking out loud. Okay. So, Please forgive me if it sounds ridiculous, but it really sounds to me, and I've always wondered about this, it seems like there has to be more because we know that the nervous systems, well, central anyways, and peripheral and brain are all a continuous loop, and they never, if one gets interrupted, the rest are kind of compromised or a lot maybe compromised. But there has to be a connection fascia-wise, fascia memory. Is there? I mean, there has to be. Absolutely. These Absolutely. There's not as much science to support it yet because, as you know from Sue's work, the, they used to take that, that part of the, the cadaver and throw it in the 
trash and look at the skeleton and the and the muscles instead of the intelligence that the connective tissue was. And by the yeah. way, if you're doing chicken, you can when you pull the skin off, there's like that other like filmy piece underneath it that and it runs in all directions. That is yeah. why we're gonna train in all the dimensions. Oh, not mm -hmm. just in linear ways or yeah it's a web um, yeah machines at the gym because it's not your life right getting down and up is your life so you mm -hmm. need to feel different and this bird can do many different versions like the ones i showed you of getting up and down on the floor you know mm -hmm. he had a guy that came to do the cable and he was 20 years old and he went bert and him on the floor and bert got up he went whoa <laughs> Well, yeah. so I'm going to go off now and some people may get upset at me and it's okay because I'll qualify what I'm saying. <laughs> this, this is, so first of all, what you're sharing with me is so valuable. Um, Thank we, you. We have to, we have to do a part two of this. I have a few more minutes left. We have, we have to do a part two, but also this is where I think that, um, you know, first time I went to Europe was for Dr. Emily to teach substitute for her at parkour in London. And I have to tell you when I got there, I listened to these presenters and I was, I, I was scared to death to speak because they know so much like the Europeans uh, and they're, they're in the movement business and the physios and the movement specialists. I mean, they're way ahead of us here in this country in America. And um, thank God they are because I had my niche. I was able to speak effectively and it was fine. However, I, what, what you're describing is eons ahead of our here's where the upsetness could come in is the physical therapy community generally speaking in this country or the personal trainers the fitness trainers and i'm one of them i mean i was one who stuck with a certain model i won't say what certification i have although you probably know if you follow me it's not a bad one it's probably one of the better ones but you compare it with the european ones it's nothing you got to have a year internship and thousands of dollars before you're able to do anything one-on-one -on -one with a person because, like you say, this isn't your life. Getting up and down is your life. Moving is your life. And that's why we're, what I think is you're way ahead. Way I, I wish we'd talked years ago now. But <laughs> well, I'm just glad we're talking now. And, and, and somehow we got to work together and do stuff because... I need to, we need to bring what you're teaching to the forefront because it's so important. I want to also add this, this little tiny and share authentically with the people who are, you know, watching this on a replay or whatever at 60, believe me, I honestly didn't even think I would make it this far because I went through a seven year depression where I was literally flat -like. And The only mm. thing I could do, the only thing I could possibly do was go and teach my seniors this program. Because you know what, the, here's the thing, it may sound a little callous, but even if you're sick like in the head is what I called it, you're still better than the 80 year old in your class, right? Mm -hmm. Right? So you go there and you feel better because you're helping somebody. That's the only time you feel better when you're helping somebody. Yeah. But, but this is the only exercise I could do. And the first time it became like I created it was because I spent 17 and three quarter hours from New York to Johannesburg in a plane. So I've got to do something. I'm an ADHD poster child. I've got to move, 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 and I'm moving my chest. I've figured out a way to do it effectively. You're in my club. Same thing. Same right. But then it became a necessity for me when I got into this little state of mind that I put myself in, that I needed to do something, and I couldn't get up. I couldn't even go anywhere. Listen, this is me being telling you that I was, I was suffering from bad imposter syndrome because here I am the fitness professional, and I can't do anything, right? Mm. So that's why I want to encourage people that the more you walk down here, it's an African, it's an African illustration. If you go down a path that is not a path, you have to bash and bundu bash and you have to cut the grass and walk, 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 walk down that path. Okay. But soon, if you walk down it enough, it's going to become easy to walk down. There's going to be nothing's going to be growing there. It's going to become a super highway. Right, yeah, so it's, yeah. that's the direction of your thought. So depending, it doesn't matter what direction, if it's bad or good. No, that's that's People so true. Down too. that path, it's going to get easier to slide down there without looking. But if you let it grow over and you pick another one and you start chopping that one, you're gonna that one's gonna grow over, 
and then this one's going to become a super highway bus. Yeah, that's bottle. very true. It's very, 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 you know, so I have to go off on a tangent for just 30 seconds. I can't remember the guy's name, but um, he's a guy, he motivation speaker, MD, maybe, I don't know. He has uh, written books. I don't know the name of any of them because I don't generally like his books. However, however, he has some good information. I'm probably glad I don't remember his name because I wouldn't want to offend anybody. But one of the things he said, and this has to do with neural pathways in the brain. MIT did brain scans, brain imaging a few years ago. And they were talking about positive and negative thought or habitual thought pattern neural pathways. And I am still guilty of some negative thought pathways. And I mean, you're a human being. Yeah, yeah, especially <laughs> lately. And I think it's because it's minus 14 and I have a lot of pain and I don't know why. And I think it's. Well, I would not be very happy in minus 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nope. I don't know what it is. I, I actually today the pain is much less, probably because I slept eleven, uh, ten hours straight, and every time I sleep a lot, I feel better. I love sleeping. I'm really good at it. But anyways, is uh, I'm not that good at sleeping. They anymore. show that it, for people who have gone in and chosen to, however they choose to do it, there are all kinds of techniques. You have to do what works for you, but to create these other habitual thought patterns. My friend Laura, who's on with us right now, is one of these people who is a pioneer in the positive and happy thoughts uh, creation of super highways. Uh, She says, I taught her stuff. I actually don't remember what I taught you, Laura. I can't remember, but if you could teach it back to me, I'd appreciate it. Is that it's true that that pathway, even if it's just a habitual thought pattern, we, this can change actual um, um, structure in the brain and the images prove it. So, What I, you went going back to something you said, a state of mind or something that you put yourself in. Yeah. That's a really, really powerful thing. And I find it for myself when I communicate with somebody like you. uh, Well, there's nobody like you. You're, you're uniquely you, but this, this situation is so I'm learning so much today. I already feel better just from having talked to you because I learned a lot and I'm relating so well to everything that you said. No, because believe me, when I was in it, I honestly, I used to sit and like console myself with the fact that I've had a very good life so far and it's okay if I'm never, ever, ever going to have fun again. <laughs> ever. Okay? And I had a little box where I'd keep all my things that reminded me that I'd had fun some once. And and like console, and that's okay, you had a lot of fun in your life. It's all right. You, you're all right. You can carry on now and never have fun again. Right? <laughs> but here's the key that really helped me was becoming the observer mm. and going wow that's interesting oh you just had that thought is that true huh um, like seriously now i can laugh about when i was in that state like when i couldn't go to the store my friend and i laughed but he says oh fanny he calls me fanny he says remember when you when you couldn't go to the store you couldn't go to costco for me I'm like, yeah, I can remember that. It was terrifying. I could not go to a store. Ah, me, right? Now I can do a one arm cartwheel in the store if you want. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Wow. You know? I love it. I love it. Um, So, unfortunately, I have to go soon. So I need to even have one home visit today and then the rest is here at the clinic. We will do this again. We're going to do part two soon because I know you have a lot more to share. I think so. And yeah, thank you, I so. everybody. I never saw your comments. I've been just, you know, so excited. Well, let's about go through. Hey, so let's go through real quick. Um, going back up. Okay. Uh, yep, yep, Laura, yep. Almost. I'm going to read hers. She practiced. Yeah, yeah. I know she practices the music. finger. And oh, the it's music. Music, music, music. Music, music. Better to slow down movements to your brain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I get a copy of this? Yes, I said that. Okay, very interesting. Yep. Helps me with balance and improves. Yes. Um, yeah, by the way, confidence comes with balance, right? So if you yeah. can feel like I'm grounded, I feel like I've got, you know, I, I, I've got a better understanding of it than confidence. You. Yeah. I mean, you Laura, know. there's a question you asked that I meant to ask sooner and I forgot. 
um, to Thank ask and can you ask if she does this? And that question is, what is this? With her fingers stretched or open? And I can't remember what movement it was. Or does it not matter? The, um, if it's the core fist, okay. If it's the core fist, right? Oh, all answered. Okay, everything's answered. Okay. Okay, good. Yeah. So, so just so you know, when Bert gets the shakes and I do the core fist, look how beautifully we designed. If you take two of these, you can stroke at them. Look at this design. Isn't it amazing? We are designed so incredibly. Look at that. Whoa. You can now fit them, fit them into each other like a sprocket. Mm -hmm. And then you can roll it. Yeah. And you can push that again. You think you're going to shake when you're like holding it tight like that? Oh, I got to try that today with some people. Haha, <laughs> 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 man. And when I sign off here, please stay on with me for a moment. I have a question. Oh, I well. ask. It's called the highs of fire hose treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, I really, I, I really hate to go, but I do need to in a minute. But um, let's just ask real quick. Anyone watching? Any questions right now? We got about two minutes left. We're gonna do another part two, maybe in a week or two weeks. We'll do this because we have to. This is so important. What Anne's doing. Uh, yep. Thank you, Laura. We love you, too. You don't know Laura, but I hope you get to meet her soon. Love to. And, uh, okay, uh, where can people go to learn about you and your, your ebook and anything you have to offer or put out there? Your you website. put all that information in your wonderfully um, articulate post, and it's anheiser.com. That's A-N-N-H-E-I-Z for zebra, E-R. Okay. And I'm on Facebook movement motivation and more is my group or change the way you age is my brand and you can hashtag change the way you age you will see all kinds of crazy antics oh cool I definitely <laughs> be doing that okay well um the, we're just tip, tip of the iceberg today so part two maybe we have to make a series seriously i think we need to make a little series out of this down i'm down i'm oh, totally i i never say that to any i've never actually said that to anybody this oh. is so important. We must do this and at least do a few parts. So today's part one. Ready when Thank you, are. you very, very much. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Thank you. And so stay on with me, Anne, please. And um, Laura, 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 Kathy and Ted, thanks for joining. Thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate it very, very much. I'll be in touch with all of you soon because I have reasons to contact all of you. And Anne, stay with me. Have a great day, everyone. And remember, do everything Anne says. <laughs> okay. You can change right. the way you age at any age. I love it. All right. Have a great day, folks. Bye, guys.